Tonight is going to be blistering cold, and staying warm on these icy winter nights can be a nightmare. You usually have to decide between freezing all night or using a complicated heater setup. Many people swear by this little heater right here. They say it is a safe, dry way to keep your minivan camper warm during those freezing cold nights. But lately I've been wondering exactly how safe and dry it truly is. You see, although this heater doesn't have a true flame, it consumes massive amounts of oxygen. In fact, on high, this little box consumes oxygen at the rate of 11 full-grown adults. Moisture, that is one of the main chemical byproducts of the catalyst process. So the question is, how truly safe and dry is it? Tonight, we're testing the invisible. I'm sealing the doors, cranking the heat, and using professional sensors to find out if this is the ultimate winter hack or a soggy, dangerous mistake. Now, Camco explicitly states that ventilation is required to safely operate this. This isn't a review or a knock on this heater. I just want to quantify the data so we can find the driest, safest, and most efficient way to use it. So let's get a baseline. To get the truth, I'm not just guessing. I'm running these four sensors to monitor exactly what's happening in this air. First up is this oxygen monitor. This is a professional unit that workers wear on job sites, like mines and construction zones to monitor their environment. This is my lifeline. It tracks oxygen levels in real time, and I need to know the second that percentage drops below the safety threshold. Second is a dedicated carbon monoxide alarm. If the oxygen gets too low and the heater starts choking, this is the first thing that's going to scream if we hit incomplete combustion. Third, we want to know, are we actually producing heat with the heater? So I have a monitor outside. We're showing about 24 degrees. Fahrenheit currently inside about 70 degrees Fahrenheit and finally the air things 2960 I've configured this to track four specific data points humidity to see if this dry heat is actually turning the van into a swamp carbon dioxide to monitor that 11 adult oxygen burn in real time particulate matter 2.5 and then finally volatile organic compounds now, I've had this heater running for a little bit, and we can already see these two are getting a little high. I do know that 5,000 is really where you start to see a headache in the carbon dioxide range, and we're definitely not there. I'm setting these right here at breathing level. Now, the baseline is set. The heater is on high. The windows are going up, and I'm sealing the van. For safety reasons, I'm not staying inside during this part of the test. I'll be monitoring everything from the outside, through a window, with a time lapse. Let's see what happens to the air inside this 200 cubic foot box. I'm running this test until we get sufficient data, or until one of the alarms tells me it's time to stop. So for the last hour, I've been monitoring the air things readout. It spiked on the carbon dioxide pretty quickly, but I just got back and that oxygen alarm is absolutely going wild. So I wanna go ahead and get the van aired out and get this thing reset. Checking the time lapse, I could see that within about 45 minutes, the oxygen levels inside the van became critically low. And even without me inside the van, the windows are absolutely fogged up. So dry is definitely a myth. I've got the minivan's HVAC running on full speed right now, and I know from previous experience that that will absolutely clear out the rest of the air that wasn't already cleared from having the doors and the windows open. The general rule of thumb for ventilation when it comes to propane heat is about one square inch of surface area per thousand BTUs. In my case, the Camco Wave 3, 3,000 BTUs, that would be three square inches of surface area, meaning I would need a hole at least about two inches in diameter to meet the minimum oxygen requirements. The other problem that I would have in the minivan is without the fan on, there's no ventilation in here. There's no fan moving air around. So that stagnant air is going to need a much greater amount of air to be safe to sleep with. Now, when I hear people ask, how much ventilation do I actually need? I will see people answer with a response like crack your windows one or two inches. Now that the air in here is starting to clear out, I'm going to run this test one more time using that common setup and see exactly what kind of air quality we get. The most shocking part of that sealed vehicle test was that this carbon monoxide detector, which 
I use frequently, I've relied on this thing for years to tell me whether or not the air is safe. This didn't even register that the oxygen was depleting. So the real problem isn't that I had an incomplete burn, which is what creates carbon monoxide. It's that the heater was consuming the oxygen. And within about 45 minutes, the oxygen levels were dangerously low. Also recently used this quite a bit to monitor carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide levels did get alarmingly high. CO2 at 5,000 parts per million isn't necessarily deadly. It's deadly at a much higher 40,000 par 40, parts per million, but 5,000 is where you start to feel tired, a little woozy, get headaches, not safe, but you still don't know or realize that there's no oxygen in the minivan. The only thing that could truly give me the oxygen reading is a dedicated oxygen monitor. And this thing dropped alarmingly fast with the windows closed. Something you want to consider when you're using a heater like this is it can burn through one of these one pound cylinders in about three to four hours on high or maybe seven to eight hours on its lowest setting. So it can be quite expensive, especially if you're using these disposable cans. So if you plan to run that heater on its highest setting, you could burn through two or three of these in just one night of sleeping. I would consider getting a larger propane tank. It will run more efficiently. It will also be able to run better with respect to heat management because these cylinders do get frozen and it slows down their ability to provide propane as they get more and more cold. Even with the Wave 3 on high, the difference with ventilation is stark. The oxygen level is holding at a rock solid 20.9% and the carbon dioxide has stabilized well below the headache zone. It turns out that a little bit of airflow is all it takes to keep the air quality at safe levels, which is exactly how Olympian says that you should use this device. That being said, I still recommend never sleeping with a heater like this operating. Use it before you go to sleep and then light it again in the morning to warm your space. And here is another reality. We're still fighting moisture. The humidity is higher than the outside air because this catalyst process is inherently wet. It's a trade-off for sure. You get the warmth, but you have to safely manage the environment. We've just seen how fast a sealed minivan can become dangerous, but I know there are a lot of people watching this right now who are just starting their journey and playing their first freezing night out on the road or at camp. So if you could give just one piece of advice to a beginner to help them stay both warm and safe tonight, what would it be? Is it a specific piece of gear you never camp without? or a trick for managing condensation. Your answer might be exactly what someone needs to be ready to be safe on their first trip. I'll see you in the comments.